Hi guys, sorry to interrupt your video. Just a quick plea, subscribe to my channel please. If you haven't done it already, subscribe. Tell your friends, subscribe. Thanks. Hello everybody. Right, I'm going to do the vehicle and motorcycle loading topic. Although there's no motorcycles in it, but hey ho, such is life. So the vehicle loading topic, let's crack on with that. So who's responsible for making sure that a vehicle isn't overloaded? Uh, the answer to that is the driver of the vehicle. Basically, if you are demonstrating that you're going to put a vehicle on the road, you have the responsibility to make sure that everything's hunky-dory. All right. So the driver of the vehicle is responsible for that. Uh, the owner of the items being carried, you know, I mean, if somebody went and made something like, I don't know, cereals, and they get a lorry driver that carries it, the person that made the cereals can't be held responsible for how the bloke transported it, can they? person who loaded the vehicle, well, yeah, they've got an obligation to make sure everything's fine, but ultimately it's the driver that puts it on the road. And the licensing authority, well, no, they don't. They just issue driving licenses, don't they? So, carrying heavy loads will affect control and the vehicle's characteristics. If the vehicle you're driving is overloaded, you'll be held responsible. Yes, you will. You wish to tow a trailer. Where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? Right, um, the tow hitch is where you go and click a trailer onto, and the nose weight will be in the owner's manual that came with your car, because it will say what weight you can actually have. All right, so in your vehicle handbook. <clears throat> you must know how to load your trailer or caravan so that the hitch exerts an appropriate downward force on the tow ball. Information about the maximum permitted nose weight can be found in your vehicle handbook or obtained from your vehicle manufacturer's agent. What should you do if you're towing a trailer and it starts to swing from side to side? Right, okay. Well, there's a number of things that we can do here. Um, the answer is ease off the accelerator. Now, if we think about how a vehicle tows, when you start off, you've got a caravan connected to the back of your car and the caravan is not swaying around erratically behind your car. You're just towing it, aren't you? So therefore, as we build speed, then we start to get this swinging from side to side. So therefore, the issue is the speed, isn't it? Uh, the speed puts a resonance through the vehicle and it sort of can induce a sway from side to side when another force exerts on it, such as a side wind uh, or a vehicle going past and they blow your vehicle, that sort of thing. Okay, Or weight moving around inside the vehicle. Um, so, obviously, the speed is the one of the factors that's affecting things here, so logically slow down. But we don't want to do it suddenly, as you'll find out in a minute, uh, so just ease off the accelerator and the vehicle will slow down gradually. Otherwise, if you suddenly slow what's at the front, if the back was swinging out here and you suddenly break there, the back will just keep going and your jackknife will flip over. So if you're towing something, uh, you just want to ease off and then let it get back in line. OK, but there are various things that you can use. So with that in mind, let's watch some videos. Where's Jeff? Uh, yeah, here we go. Here's Jeff. Right, just to highlight to you, I've gone to YouTube and I've gone to Miller's RV. If you look down here, there you go, Miller's RV. Um, we'll go and see what Jeff says about this. Hey, this is Jeff Hilliard with Miller's RV in another one of our Ask Us video series. We get the question all the time, do I need a weight distributing hitch for my travel trailer and or do I need a sway control? So I want to tell you a little bit about what a weight distributing hitch does and why you do need one in your travel trailer that you're going to be towing. So your travel trailer, when you hook it up, the weight on the tongue of your travel trailer is heavier than what you're going to get with a utility trailer or a boat trailer or something like that. So it's going to cause the back of your truck and the tongue of the trailer to bend down. Uh, and that is going to make the weight too little weight on the front tires of your truck and too much weight on the front of the trailer, too little on the rear axle of the truck, and it's going to cause sway between those. So what a weight distributing kit does 
if you can imagine, so this is a steel torsion bar. This part locks into part of a bigger hitch head other than your normal head you have on, your, uh, on a truck. So it's gonna be a bigger hitch head and this locks it in. So you can imagine if this part is sitting rigid with your truck, when you put the travel trailer on the back end, it's gonna cause the, bot the back of the truck to go down and this is gonna pivot down with it. So now this bar is sitting at this angle. So what we do with the weight distributing hitch is we crank the trailer and the, the truck up by cranking up the tongue jack on the trailer and then we lock this part of the bar in on the trailer so when you then release the weight, this steel torsion bar is taking the weight of the travel trailer tongue weight and distributing it more evenly across the trailer by this bar not bending. So this is what your steel torsion bar does, is distribute the weight more evenly across the front axle of the truck and the rear axle of the trailer. So the trailer sits level, the weight is distributing evenly, and you don't get really bad sway going down the road, and your truck is not too light on the front end. Now there are two basic hookups that you're gonna get. There's some other ones out there, but the primary two are the style that most people are familiar with from a, a while back is the chain style. So the chain, you basically use the number of lengths of chain to determine how much weight distrib distribution you want, and it locks in on the tongue of the trailer, represented by a little display here. The other is the new style with the L bracket, and you adjust the L bracket height to determine how much weight distributing you're taking off. Both of these also are determined by the pitch of the head, which is part of the setup we do. If you want to come get your truck or and trailer set up with us, we'll set up your weight distributing hitch correctly and get the weight distributed evenly. So that is going to distribute the weight correctly. So the next question I get is, do I need a sway control? Now, what we've done here is take care of the weight on the hitch weight, but you still have a trailer on a tendency on a trailer, especially a long trailer, to want to sway. You can almost picture it as if you're going down the road and the truck it's so normally when the truck starts to slow down or an 18 wheeler pass you or a gust of wind, it's almost like the travel trailer is trying to go faster than the truck and is trying to get past it and it causes it to sway. So there are two options. With the older style hitch like this, there is a sway control. And this bar has a sliding bar inside of it and the outside clamps down on it and this acts just as a brake. The tighter you tighten this, the harder these two parts are to go. This part locks in on a ball on the hitch. This part locks in on a ball on your tongue. And by keeping those two parts, making it more difficult to move in and out, you're gonna keep that sway from going back and forth. So this is the more traditional sway control. The new style bars with the L brackets, the sway control is actually built in by the weight of this bar resting on this L bracket. And that is your friction plate, just like there is one in here that takes care of your sway control there. So with the older style chain, you will need a separate sway control like this. If the newer style L brackets, you will not need a sway control because it's built into the hitch already and it's taking care of your sway that way. That leads us to one other part. We often get the question, do I need a brake control? You do need a brake control in the state of Louisiana by law, but also for safety reasons. What the brake control does is when you depress the brakes in your truck, it applies the brakes on the trailer. So actually, as soon as your brake light illuminates on the truck, even if you're not braking hard, it's gonna be braking the brakes on the trailer. The situation comes up often. People have ever driven, I just had a customer leave a few minutes ago, had a really scary experience, picked up a trailer, bought for use from an individual, and brought it home without a weight distributing hitch on there and without a sway control on there. And his trailer started swaying on him to the point where he was down to you know, 30, 40 miles an hour getting home, very, very nervous. And I've been in the situation, it's no fun at all. What you never do in that situation, when your trailer is swaying, you never step on the brakes of your vehicle. Do not step on the brakes of your vehicle. If you've ever seen a trailer jackknifed or flipped over, that's because when the trailer is at its angle all the way over, you step on the brakes and all of a sudden the trailer's momentum is still going forward and then it wants to jackknife and flip you. Do not step on the brakes of your trailer. Now, you can do two ways. One way is to actually speed up a little bit. Do not recommend that because it's gonna pull the trailer behind you. But the other thing, the brake control has a lever that will allow you to apply the brakes on the trailer without having to brake the vehicle. So you keep your foot on the brake, on the accelerator on your truck, keep your vehicle going the same speed, and then you reach over and you start sliding the brake control on your trailer. Now you don't wanna jam it on because you don't wanna lock up your brakes, but as you slide it over, you will feel the trailer line up behind your truck and stop swaying. 
Now you're not gonna be able to do this the whole time to keep it, you still need a sway control, but in an instance where you get too much wind for the sway control to overcome, or you are traveling without a sway control, you do not want to hit your brakes, instead you want to slide that brake control lever. That's how you keep safe traveling in a tow. Again, if you want to, come by, we will professionally set up your vehicle for you and help you make sure that you are safe to travel. This is Jeff. Gee, thanks Jeff. That's mighty fine of you, son. So there you go. So there's Jeff talking about your sway bars and your control. Uh, we should talk about uh, weight distribution, actually. Although I think there is a question coming up about that, so we'll come up to that. But let's have a look. So your towing trailer starts to swing from side. So ease off the accelerator to reduce your speed. Jeff did say you could also accelerate, but he doesn't recommend it. Your best bet is just to slow it down and get it back in line. Let go of the steering wheel and let it correct itself. Never a good idea. Your car's doing this and you just let go of the steering wheel. Not great. Brake hard. No, that will cause it to jackknife. Accelerate until it stabilizes. Well, you could pull it in line, but then I would immediately get back off the accelerator to get it to slow down. But I mean, you know, that's quite extreme. You shouldn't be getting to the point where it's going like this. You should have slowed down already by then. Right, so strong winds or buffeting from large vehicles can cause a trailer or caravan to swing from side to side or snake. If this happens, ease off the accelerator. Don't brake harshly, steer sharply or increase your speed. 